All right, guys, it is rabbit butcher day today. I've had 12 to do. I'm down to my last four, so we're going to do another little video for you guys. It's been probably about three, four years maybe since we did our original video, and uh, not much has changed, but this video is going to be a little bit different. We are going to be showing the bopping and the bleeding in this one. Um, that is, we've gotten a lot of questions about it. We've gotten a lot of people message and ask specifically how we do it so we wanted to do another video um so if you're sitting there with your pet rabbit watching this video that is clearly going to be labeled rabbit butchering you're an idiot hey what kind of rabbits okay these are american chinchillas in my previous video we were doing new zealand since then i've switched over to the uh, american chinchillas uh, it's a heritage breed they're listed as rare in the national breed conservatory or conservancy yeah whatever that word is so but yeah, these are my guys. Um, I like them. They grow really fast. They have nice, beautiful coats. And all right, follow me. We're going to go get these guys hung up. Okay, so I like to use a pet carrier. Um, I'll put two of them in at a time to carry them over to my butcher station. And just to kind of give you a, a little tools of the trade sort of rundown, I have my knife here. I like a nice long blade. Uh, this is just a fish fillet knife. It's about eight inches long. Okay. And then I have here my bunny bludgeon. <laughs> it's just a little bat mark made for me before I was using like the wooden handle of a hammer. Now why are you bludgeoning? Because I hate this part, but here, we might as well do this. <laughs> so I'm filming this and I have to watch this. I normally have nothing to he do with this. Like this. I don't do any of this part. I'm a hunter, but this is this is what it is. This is how it is. So okay, explain to me what's going on. There are a lot of different methods to do this part. There's cervical dislocation, there's a bolt gun. I like to do what I call the bop and bleed. When you do that, and I'm, I'll explain that as it happens, but basically, I'm gonna grab my rabbit now. These guys are oversized. Are you doing it right now? Cause yeah, I'll go ahead and do it right now. Okay, now these guys are oversized. The reason for the about, bop. I know, they're about three weeks oh. oversized, so they're a little bit harder for me to manage. Um, basically, I'm gonna grab them right here, right in front of these back thighs. I'm gonna let them dangle a little bit, and then I'm gonna bop them. When you bop them, you wanna go right here on the forehead. And it gives them a quick stun, kind of knocks them out, makes them a little bit dizzy, so that way you can then hang them and, and cut not, their jugular. And not get hurt by them. And not get hurt. They still kick. They're going to kick. But, all right, here goes. But it's quick. Oh, you ready, honey? I hate this part. All right, again, this is going to happen. So if you don't want to see it, I'm looking fast away. forward by like a minute or two, maybe. All right. Oh, that one went a little bit behind the ears. Hold on, hold on, dude. Hold on. Now I'm all nervous. There we go. There it is. You don't have to do it super hard. It's yeah, you don't want to kill them. You, you want to kill stun them. You don't them. want to crack the skull. See, they're too heavy. They're probably about a pound and a half overweight. Just time-wise, I just haven't gotten to do them yet. Had he not been bopped, he would be going crazy right now. Let me pick my bopper back up so that way I don't trip on it. Okay. Now. Show me where. Come over here a little bit. Come on this side. You want to go about right here, right yeah. in this crease. You can feel their jawbone. Okay. And I blow on it to separate the hair. A lot of times your knife gets stuck in the hair and it creates problems. So now you're looking for the jugular, I'm not. I'm looking for the jugular. Not go, the esophagus. No. You don't want to go too far forward because you'll hit the esophagus and then they'll gurgle and they kind of strangle. You don't want that to happen. It does happen. Don't get upset with yourself. If it happens. Just watch that finger, honey. That was a clean bleed. That was, I got the esophagus a little bit. You can kind of hear it gurgling, but it was only a little nick. That was a good bleed. Now, I like the long knife because you get a nice long slice. Um, this method works best for us because the heart is continuing to pump and it's pulling all of the blood out of all the meat and stuff. 
it's acting like a bilge pump in your boat, so to speak. So instead of leaving the blood in it, in the meat, and getting that tainted, bloody flavor, you're getting a very nice, clean, flavorful meat. Okay, and when I'm doing it, I always hold their head and their front feet. I don't like them flopping around. I've seen some videos where they don't do that and they just kind of let them flopping around. I don't like doing that. He's done. It's what quick. was that, like 30 seconds? If that. Yeah. So from here, I will crack, pop the, brain, or pop the neck. And that was just nerves right there. He's already gone. And slice the head off into my bucket. Let me clean my hands and my knife. No. The you first okay, rabbit, honey? no. Okay? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> the first rabbit she ever brought home was from a friend, and they did the cervical dislocation where they break the neck, and Allison cooked it for dinner. It tasted like dirt. I mean, straight up dirt. I told her we could just throw the whole operation in the garbage, don't even waste your time, because I'm not eating this. Turns out it's because the cervical dislocation that there is no bop and bleed. Mm -hmm. The bop and bleed makes it taste better. Just like the bow hunters, you bow hunters understand that a bow shot deer tastes better than a gunshot deer. So same thing. All right, you want me to get on that side, honey? So, Hold okay. on, I'm switching. I'm switching. Okay, when you go to hang them, you want to make sure they're... The, I'm going to move your umbrella. Okay, you want to make sure the rope is around this hawk here. That way, if they flop around and stuff like that, it won't pull out. But from here, I'm going to go ahead and move it up closer to the toes. If I can get it, marks in my way. That way when I slice, because I'm gonna cut up to the ankles when I do my V. All right, get my knife. Now I pull out, pinch and pull out, and you kind of want to just run your knife right up, right up to that ankle. I have a fire ant biting me. All right, and when you do it, have your knife blade point out so that way you don't cut into your meat. Now I did a little tiny bit, but that knife be okay. is sharp. It is very sharp. All right, you're in my way. Now I've got to find out where my cut was. Okay. Have you ever noticed that every time you do a rabbit, they're always blowing their coat? Well, these guys aren't blowing their coat, but when you're messing and pulling on their fur, it just comes out. These guys are, again, like two weeks overdue. They're about 13, 14 weeks old. So it's a little bit trickier. All of their connective tissues and whatnot have kind of like gotten stronger, I guess. So they're a little bit harder to do. But, okay, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna work my thumb right in behind. I usually do right around the knee, a little bit underneath the knee sometimes is a little bit easier for me and you just work it around till you come out the other side, okay? Once you're out the other side, just pull up to that ankle. And you want to expose the ankle as much as what you can because you're gonna be cutting that right there at the end when you take him off, oh, and it just pulled off. So you know, the younger rabbits, it pulls off. This is the first time that it's pulled off on this batch for me. But if it doesn't pull off, just slice it with a knife. I'll try to leave this one connected so that way I can show you what I mean. Okay, again. You're not saving any hides today, are you? I am saving these ones. Um, I usually don't. Typically when I butcher them, they're in between their coats, so it's not really a good quality hide. Plus I live in Florida, so I don't have a huge need for rabbit hide, but I want to make a vest this time. We're up in a northern part of the Florida where it's a little bit colder. Well, we actually have a little bit of a winter, so I wouldn't mind saving them. God, they're fatty. But they are blowing their coat. Now, when you start to skin them and you see these black splotches, that means they're blowing their coat. And if you tan that hide, you can, but the hair will always kind of fall out. Since I'm just making a vest for me, it doesn't really matter. Okay, now I've pulled down both of the legs and what I've done, I've worked my way up to the, um, the tail right here. Now, watch out Mark, so I can get my knife, grab my knife again put it behind. Now you want to kind of slice kind of away at a 45 degree angle to get that tail off. It's okay if you leave a little puff here. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Depends on how far I've skinned and how much I've pulled. I'll just go ahead and pull it off. Okay, from here, you're just pulling off just like a tube sock. Now, 
I can see right here my belly is kind of starting to rip so I don't want to continue doing that because then it'll just rip the belly skin I'm gonna go ahead and just pull that fat so that way it kind of separates on its own or you know I'm helping it separate so that way it doesn't continue pulling that meat pull it off like a jigsaw Ooh, goodness all right down to the ankles right here you want to expose where the ankles bend okay because that's where we're going to cut through um, a lot of people will just cut them with like some kitchen shears I don't like doing that I always cut the tendons and break at the joint to kind of break the joint um, if you cut through the bone you're going to leave sharp bone fragments that will poke through we use a vacuum saver bag so you'll 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 leave sharp bone fragments that will cut pop through your your vacuum sealer bags i'm sorry i'm talking too much i'm like Bleh. all right Just, boop, there we go all right there we have our hide probably not going to save this one because it is there blowing are a lot big of, time yeah there are a lot of spots like look at all that my other ones were not i'm not sure why this one is okay so from here i'm gonna go ahead pinch that belly a little bit make a small slice just enough that I can get my fingers down and then from there I'm gonna get my fingers down in there to kind of separate pull the belly away you can use gravity you can pull on it to use gravity to get that the intestines and stuff like that away from your knife okay you so don't pull water anymore do you I don't pull water I don't pull feed anymore okay. it just I, because my water, they're all connected. I'll feed a little bit less the day before, but my waterers are all connected, so I'd have to pull oh, water. What are you for doing everybody. here? Most okay. important part. So from here, I went to. I, you lift up on it, kind of, and you want to score the pelvic bone right there. Okay, let me put my knife down real quick. Not cutting through, but Not scoring it. Not cutting through. You're just kind of scoring it. See? Pop. see it. The pelvic bone completely breaks. You got a little doo-doo muffin yep. going on right there. From there, I'm gonna go on either side of the digestive tract and I'm gonna continue to cut, okay? Flick that doo-doo muffin out. It's gonna drive me nuts. Boop. Okay. Okay. Now, again, other side. Just stop. Okay, again, lift up, get your finger in there. Pull the digestive tract away and everything just comes right out and just be careful make sure okay. you get that bladder down in a way in case yep. it decides to empty for any yeah, reason sometimes it'll empty once you cut all that stuff out it'll empty now these guys are super super fat all right stomach intestines here's the liver whenever i am butchering i always check the liver make sure it looks good and healthy this one does. We're going to save these and eat these. I heard that they're delicious, but this will be our first time. Um, what you're, what I'm looking for is liver, like weird ulcer type looking spots, yellowish spots on the liver. And that's a sign of coccidosis, which is really bad for the rabbits. So these ones are nice and clean. That's how you want it to look. Let me go ahead and put it over here in the cooler. Okay. Pull out the kidneys. Diaphragm. And you don't have to worry about popping Oops. anything here. Once nope. the gut Once is out. Once all the guts and everything is out, you don't have to worry. You don't have to be as, as delicate. Again, looking at the lungs, making sure there's no signs of any kind of pasturella diseases or anything. Again, they'll look like ulcers and spots and stuff. Now, I was pulling out all the fat, but Mark's telling me to hurry up. The video is getting too long. It's so, not about that. I don't. It doesn't uh, show me how long the battery is on this, and I was at uh, like fifty percent. Okay. Um, there is a vein that runs along those two inner loins, so I'm just pulling that out, and that usually grabs all this stuff up here too. Um, there's a uterine horn. Basically, at this point, all the important stuff is out. You're just doing your final touches. Um, the fat. I save the fat to make soap. It's not really good as far as like eating wise goes. It gets kind of like boogery and jelly and it, it doesn't melt down like a nice pork or chicken fat does. So most people just throw it away. I save it because I make soap with it. It makes a great bar of soap. 
and that's all my fat. Okay, so she's pretty much clean. I kind of rushed it a little bit because we're filming, but there we go. That's it. We go ahead, cut these tendons right here at this joint, okay, and then break the leg and come up behind and cut the leg, the foot off. Again, over here, cut those tendons. That's why you want to, when you're skinning, you want to go up and expose as much as you can, okay. Left a little tuft of fur, it's okay. Okay, from here, I'm rinsing. I always rinse with the back end because if you're gonna get fur on it, you're gonna get it around these loins because that's where you're cutting through everything. So, I rinse those off first. From there, flip it. I try to get as much blood off now as I can. And there we have it. A nice, cleaned rabbit. I, cooler? Cooler. How long, wh what do you got in this? Because I always forget. Okay, this is just regular ice water. Um, I'm gonna let them, I'm gonna let them sit in this regular ice water overnight, and then tomorrow I do a brine, um, and I, I soak them in that for about three days. Cool. And then the, the brine will just kind of increase moisture and increase flavor of the meat also. So, there we have it. Thanks for watching, guys.